All right, welcome. Today we're going to do our first master study on stream. First master study on this channel. We will be studying and trying to get into the mind of Peter Paul Rubens. 
Now, uh, before we move on, I want to say during this intro, uh, the reason why I had these paintings out, and I'll explain a little bit more in a bit. Uh, the, the reason why I have them out is uh, at the end of the session today, we want to create a monochromatic sketch. So something like this paintings that I've already done uh, for this piece by Peter Paul Rubens. And that is going to, instead of acting as a final piece, like these are, I just ended the sketch when I felt like it looked good. We didn't add any color. It stayed monochromatic. Uh, instead of like adding color on top of these pieces, we just ended it. And for this one, um, for this master study, we're going to create a monochromatic underpainting. And it's going to be, we're going to follow the same process that I followed for these paintings. Uh, I have, I think the stream is up for this painting, but I didn't, I made this study within the past year before I started streaming. Uh, so I have a time lapse of that. Um, but that's before I started streaming on Twitch or YouTube. Uh, and then, uh, and then this one I, we, I did on stream, um, but I don't, I don't think that stream is up anymore or it was on Twitch. So in any case, uh, what I'm going to do now is give a brief overview of the master oil painter that we will be studying, uh, during this replication. Uh, and I will note, uh, you know, when you do master studies, you always hear, uh, from artists, if you, if you look into master studies at all, or if you're just learning about them, the goal is not to copy. That's what, that's what you're told. The goal is not to copy, but instead, well, it can be multifaceted, but in the general sense, the, the goal is to get into the mind of the artist and try to figure out why they made the decisions that they made, uh, to try to learn from the artist basically. So not just, just not making a car carbon copy because I mean, uh, to be honest, we could, we could make a grid or we could use a projector, you know, which I do for some, for my own pieces sometimes. Uh, and we could, you know, we could just go through square by square and just try to recreate every value and every color exactly and perfectly, uh, without following a specific process. Um, but that wouldn't, we wouldn't really learn much by doing that by itself. We could try to replicate it that way as a master study. That would be completely valid as a master study, whatever medium you're using or anything is valid as a ma master study. Uh, because you know, there's no like actual rules, but, uh, in, in this case, um, anyway, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, let, let's go ahead and, and, and learn a little bit about Peter Paul Rubens here. Uh, I kind of went off a little bit there. Let's, uh, let me pull this up here and, uh, we're just going to do a, a brief overview of the artist, the artist that uh, painted this. So let me go ahead and switch over here to my desktop view. All right. So we have, have this, let me pull it up here. All right. So Peter Paul Rubens born, uh, you know, what's so interesting. Uh, and I just, I just <laughs> found this out now. That's crazy. Uh, Peter Paul Rubens has my, my birthday. <laughs> Peter Paul Rubens has my, uh, shares my, my birthday, which is uh, June 28th. Huh? That's a fun fact. I actually, that's not the reason why I chose this. I think there's other obvious reasons why uh, I chose uh, this painting. You can see it from my previous um, monochromatic oil sketches. I really kind of appeal to this type of style, uh, but that's interesting. All right, so June 28th, we have the same birthday. That's, that's cool. All right. Okay, so a uh, brief overview. I'm just gonna read uh, what uh, Google Arts and Culture has as a summary for uh, Peter Paul Rubens here. Let me move up a little bit. Okay. Excuse me. Peter Paul Rubens, born uh, June 28th, 1577. Oh, 400 years ago. Isn't that crazy? Um, and, until uh, May 30th, uh, 1640. So uh, yeah. He was a he was a painter during the Baroque period, and I'm going to read the summary here in a second. But I mean, that was that was 400 years ago, and you know what's crazy? This oil painting here. The reason why we have such a good I was able to print such a good reproduction of it at my local CVS, by the way, 
that's that's how I have this. Um, I printed it as a glossy photo, eight by eight by twelve, I think, uh, at at a local CVS. Anyway, uh, the reason why I'm able to get such a high resolution image is because of the medium, and that's part of what makes oil painting so cool. Is the medium itself is meant to last. The medium is meant to last, and uh, and that I, I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, and I mean, it's evident, uh, the point I was getting to, sorry, my cat ran across here. The point I was giving, getting to there was that, uh, it, it's been proven. I mean, look at this, this guy lived 400 years ago. That was before the creation of the United States, you know, like that, that was, that was before United States of America was even a thing. That was before many things 400 years ago was a long time. And we have this beautiful current uh, piece that we are able to work off of, which I'm gonna I'm gonna summarize the piece a little bit more. But let's go ahead and uh, I keep pointing to the piece like you can see it, but we're on this website, so let me go ahead and read this uh, this summary, and then um, and then we'll get back to the painting here. All right, so Sir Sir Peter Paul Rubens was a Flemish artist, so that means uh, he was a from what I believe he was a uh, artist in Belgium. So uh, he's an artist in Belgium around around that that time period, um, and he was a diplomat from a. Uh, okay, I, I apologize if I mispronounce this. Duchy of Brabant in the southern Netherlands. He is considered the most influential artist of the Flemish Baroque tradition. Baroque referring to that time period and um, style. Uh, well, there's there's more than just a painting. Baroque is more involving than that, but anyway. Uh, Rubens' highly charged compositions reference uh, erudite. Is it erudite? My goodness, I should have uh, proofread this before I uh, opened this up and read this. Of classical and Christian history, a lot of his pieces are very religious. His unique and immensely popular Baroque style emphasized movement, color, and sensuality, which followed the immediate dramatic uh, landscapes. I was going to scroll through and show you some of his other work, but I, I think YouTube might demonetize me for that. Uh, so I've chosen not to do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty tame by today's standards, but I, you know, uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue reading this. Um, which followed his immediate uh, dramatic uh, artistic style promoted by Counter-Reformation. Uh, Rubens was a painter producing altarpieces, portraits, landscapes, and history paintings of mythological and allegorical subjects. He was also a prolific designer of cartoons for Flemish tapestry uh, workshops and uh, frontispieces. I apologize if I pronounce that incorrectly. Uh, for publishers in Antwerp. I'm, let's see. Uh, in addition to running a large workshop in Antwerp that produced paintings popular with nobility and art collectors throughout Europe, Rubens was a classically educated humanist scholar and diplomat. We didn't mention that at the beginning. He's a diplomat uh, who was knighted by both Philip IV of Spain and Charles I of England. So Rubens was a uh, prolific, prolific artist excuse me, uh, the catalog of his works by Michael, uh, is that Jaffe? My goodness, I'm sounding so uh, un unlearned right now, uh, excluding num numerous copies that he made in his workshop. Okay, so uh, that's that's a basic summary of him. So he, he actually, besides this, they don't talk about this here. He, I mean, he studied, um, he, he came after Leonardo da Vinci and he, he studied Leonardo da Vinci and, and some of his other, at the time, contemporaries. Um, let me go ahead over to the summary of the painting that we're going to be working on, um, today. We're going to be starting on today. We're actually going to spend a few days on it. So this, this painting is called the study of two heads. You can see that two heads here. And so it was a study. It wasn't even a, it wasn't even a commission piece, but, uh, even though it's so incredibly beautiful, um, why was this uh, a study? Well, he was using the study for other other pieces um, to support other pieces. Uh, and in fact, uh, let me just go ahead before we go ahead and read the summary. Um, I mean, we can see that here. Uh, here's another piece here. Do you see the resemblance? You see that? 
so this is a study he did with, with someone that was sitting for him in the studio. Uh, again, we'll go into more detail about that. But by having this study, this fully, this fully fleshed out study that uh, has all the nooks and crannies, and I, and I mean it, once we start diving into this, this is, this is incredible. I mean, it's, it really is so good. Um, for this foreground subject, uh, he, I mean, it's, once he has that study, you know, he has, he has something to be able to work off of. So in this case, uh, it looks like he used this study as a reference because, you know, they didn't have photos back then. Uh, he used it as a reference for, um, for this, this, uh, this piece here and actually, um, some others as well. This was actually, uh, well, well, let's go ahead and read the summary. Let's go ahead and read that. All right. So study of two heads by Peter Paul Rubens. He's a Flemish painter. Uh, it was around circa uh, 1609. That's what it says, circa 1609. All right, so the summary says, Rubens painted studies of heads after live models and artistic sources, creating a cast of characters that served in turn as models for figures in religious and mythological works. The main figure here became a saint in a great altarpiece in 1609. So that's what I was mentioning there. I don't think that's this, that's not the same piece that we just showed, which I think was but meant to represent Plato, but I could be wrong. Uh, the main figure, okay, we, we just read that. Uh, a high priest in 1612 uh, and a river god, then Plato uh, engraving after Rubens. Yeah, that's what we just saw, that Plato one. So there are a couple other paintings that were used, that this study was used for, um, uh, that he used as a reference for uh, his, as the basis for his uh, some other subjects. Um, the other head, so this this guy over here, derived from uh, derived from one by oh derived from one by uh, man Mantec I should know that pronunciation, but I don't Mantegna uh, had its own artistic afterlife. Rubens' disciples Jacob uh, Jordans and especially Van Dyck were uh, followed the same practice. Okay, so actually that's something I didn't realize before, and perhaps you know. Maybe with someone with more knowledge, feel free to leave a comment, or um, if you're here right now, uh, you know, leave uh, leave something in the live chat. That, um, you know, let me pull this up here. I think let me make sure this is all correct. Let's see. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. So. Um, Anyway, let's continue. Uh, so it looks like he he created this off the study of someone else's study. So drive from one uh, drive from a study. From uh, okay, all right. Well, I, I'll have to look into that to figure out more of that. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is this is a study that was used uh, from a live model. Uh, obviously, the uh, paintings either they either had to use you know their mind, which you know they wouldn't in most cases. They'd use their head on top of. Like now they'd use actual reference. So in this case, he had a live model and he went through and he fleshed out this study like crazy form, color. I mean, everything's here. Every, just everything is here that you would need to be able to reference um, reference another painting uh, in a different setting, at least from this angle for this subject. And so for this study, he really was, I mean, eh, we'll, we'll see it here once I, once I get up close. I mean, he really was striving for for the detail so uh let me go ahead and hold on one sec all right Doo -doo -doo. all right so for this guy i have some notes that i uh created here And that's mostly, most of the notes that I, I, I spent uh, about an hour or two last night um, looking over the painting uh, before even like lifting up a brush or anything. And I uh, spent that time really, uh, really getting familiar with, with the painting and looking up close. Um, and man, there's just so many fantastic details. All right, so like, and, and I'm going to talk about these as I as I start as as I move on to to further phases. We're just going to do the underpainting tonight, so it's mostly just going to focus on value and and some form, um, which we're going to paint over. But uh, I mean, uh, 
man, there's just there's so much to dissect that I, I don't I don't even know where to start. Um, so I mean, like, just well, let's just do a quick overview here. Okay, I'm just gonna spend about five minutes here, uh, just doing a quick uh, overview of uh, just a, uh, some of the things that I noticed last night as I was uh, studying this uh, painting which honestly I hadn't really looked at before much before yesterday. <laughs> like I, I had seen it, but I hadn't like, like really studied it. So it was nice because I was able to get kind of a nice fresh look once I zoomed in here. And again, man, just the detail that we're able to get here uh, is, is just extraordinary. Um, this is not, this is much closer than what you probably be able to see in real life. I'm not sure how it's displayed. I think it's in the Metropolitan, this piece is. Um, but anyway, if we start at the top here, um, I mean, first uh, first of all, the softened hairline is is wonderful. Uh, it's so simple and these mass shapes that we see up here are really simple, um, but um, edge control. I mean, just right away, just this, just, just this right here just shows just how much of a mastery is. I know that sounds silly. And, and by me saying that it kind of manifests that, but we'll, we'll move on here and you, you'll see what I'm saying with, about this guy. He's pretty great. Um, there's evidence, I mean, right away at the time, this was the standard practice for, uh, oil painting. It wasn't, uh, ala prima or anything for like, you know, these proper studies or anything, it was multi-layered. Uh, so in, in this case, there's, there's very obvious evidence of multiple layers, um, whether it was done, uh, previously or afterwards. But I mean, from what you can see, there's, I mean, you can see these kind of smooth, this smooth area here, this, uh, smooth mid-tone. Um, and then when it moves into the highlights in this area, you can see the rough textures that were applied over with, uh, with opaque paint and almost kind of like wispy, just like a very wispy, like, like white, uh, I mean, it almost looks like straight white, maybe like a little bit of yellow ochre or some other type of, um, uh, neutral or maybe something like that. And it just kind of wisps on to create this really nice texture. Um, which is, which is really cool. Um, like I said, this soft edge, if that edge is hard at the hairline, um, you start to have issues and even over here. So like, because it casts a shadow and if you look at hair in real life, if you look at that hairline, um, it's actually really distracting when it's, uh, when it's just like a straight, like hard edge. And that only happens when you're using like gel and you like paste it down. But in real life, if your natural hair is kind of like hanging out right there, uh, it's very soft and you have the idea that the, uh, the head that you get an idea of that form and the interaction between that hair and the, and the forehead there. All right. So moving on, these are just rough things, like just basic things. I'm not even looking at the notes that I took. I did take quite a bit of notes, um, last night, uh, when I was looking over this painting, um, I mean, you can pause that and, and look at that if you want to, but I, I should go over most of that as we block in the color. Uh, but in this case, uh, from from the top of my head, just from like looking at this, um, it's incredible. the 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 brushwork is obviously like it's it's a master's work. If we were to look at the brush strokes uh, here, it's very very subtle, uh, but it looks like either either during the scumbling or uh, during one of the uh, earlier phases, there are some hard brush strokes and textures that were created. That go up in this direction so from the bottom of the the cheek and the jaw upwards to the eye that kind of curved that way and then from the mouth up this way so it moves in that direction and then if we were to go back up to the forehead here you can see once you get in close here you can see these brush strokes that contribute to the form in the same way where the brush strokes uh, go horizontally and they just kind of wisp on top and that it, this is all blended together. So even up close, you can't really tell uh, how all of these, uh, all of these values and colors uh, mixed together. But if you, you see this transition here, it's very obvious that he put the opaque layers on top of this earlier layer to, to create, but it's not heavy handed. There's, and it was done with, you can tell it's, it's, it's there's done with some single strokes. It was just a very light scumbling uh, on top. Um, there's lots of other crazy cool forms and details that we're going to focus on and colors. Um, but you know, I think it's better if we get to that once we actually start 
uh, painting, which I think it is time for us to do. We should start painting at this point. Spent a lot of time talking about it. I did a lot of analysis, but we're going to apply that in the painting as opposed to me just sitting here and talking about it on stream. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and switch back to. Cool. All right. Let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, like I mentioned, uh, the only reason why I had uh, these up here is to give give you an idea of where we want to go to uh, once we um, once we finish this particular session. At the end of tonight, we're going to have this, but in monochromatic, like as a sketch, kind of like this. That's the goal for tonight. And then next session, we are going to uh, we're going to start doing the second layer and we'll paint uh, some opaque layers over the underpainting with um, full fully chromatic or the fully color colored mixes. And then we might do some glazing and scumbling on top of that layer, but we'll see. We'll see where we get uh, at that point. So tonight is just the tonight is just the first layer. We move these out of the way here. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get started on the sketch. So the main goal with the sketch is uh, to pull this up here. Main goal with the sketch is to get the proportions right. Um, this initial sketch, and then we're going to do monochrome oil um, or monochrome monochromatic sketch, which is when we're going to focus on value and form. So first proportions and then a value form. So uh, before that, actually, even we're going to do a we're going to tone the canvas. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm just going to get some burnt umber. Everything we're going to do today is just going to be with a single paint and that's going to be burnt umber. My preferable pigment for uh, semi-transparent painting. So uh, let's go ahead and, or semi-transparent monochromatic painting. Let's go ahead and get this started. Let's see if we should adjust this at all. That recording. It is recording. We're going to go up close to that. There it is. Uh, I'm going to adjust this a little bit upwards. There we go. There it is. Okay. There it is. We missed it. All right. It's like a slow night tonight. I mean, you might be watching this later on. Uh, right now during the live stream, uh, it has been crickets, which is actually not been usual. I'm kind of surprised, especially I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really excited about this, but I'm guessing the timing isn't great. Sunday night is not necessarily a night for relaxation as it should be i might need to uh add some no that's fine all right that's good so let's go ahead and tone this canvas we're gonna use this burnt umber here and i'm gonna put some burnt umber down on the Palette, not a whole lot yet. I'm gonna take this very cheap bristle brush, three inches. It's a see, it's one of those cheap like a uh, couple couple dollar bin at the hardware store. 
going to use this to uh, block in block in the toning for this painting. I'm going to dip the brush in Gamsol, order, Orderless Mineral Spirits, and mix it with mix it with the burnt umber. It's really wet right now, like super wet. You'll see how wet it is once we start get this getting this going. I'll put this lid on. Well, no, we're gonna wipe it here in a second. So I'm gonna pick up as much as I can with the brush, and we're just gonna start uh, blocking this in. Pick up some more, and uh, this has it's like almost 50% Gamsol, so it's super super washy. Super light. I'm not sure why this is rocking as much as it more than it has been in the past. Very strange. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and make sure this part's blocked in here, Get right up to the edge there. Oh, and uh, also I'm working on oil and linen. Um, so oil painting on uh, linen, double oil primed. I have a roll of double oil primed um, linen. Uh, I cut out to size and uh, glued with archival glue onto a, um, onto hardboard, nine by 12. That's the, uh, that's what we're working with tonight. All right, so we got a nice, even surface between these two here not perfect but uh, i'm going to take that and let's clean this brush it's pretty easy to clean because it's mostly gamsol brush is mostly clean. Go ahead and get my gloves on here. Very wet. You can see it's kind of bubbling. Go ahead and wipe up what happened to the canvas there too too wet for what we're going to need for this next phase. Okay. I'm going to take a fresh paper towel and I'm going to wipe down the surface, this uh, first layer here. And that might be, this might be actually all we want to wipe down for now. Try to abstract the shapes here on the canvas a little bit more. It's not distracting at all.
Okay. So that's our tone canvas. Let me go ahead and uh, do this too. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, let's see, 42 minutes. Let's go ahead and start to uh, sketch in this initial form. We're gonna try to find the shape here. And uh, since we have these side by side, and uh, this is a glossy photo print, um, it's gonna be really pretty easy throughout this process to match measurements. It's going to be easy to spot differences. Uh, it's going to be very easy to color match, which is pretty cool. Um, usually if I'm working out of, off a monitor reference or a reference that's not in the same lighting, um, color matching is a bit difficult. Uh, color matching, you, you have to have the same lighting uh, from your reference to your subject if you want to be able to color match while you're color mixing. Well, this time we now have uh, identical, practically identical lighting because we have these side by side. I also have a second copy. So once we start the second layer with actual color, I have a second copy that I'm going to put under glass or laminate or something like that and uh, have it, um, I'm going to have it next to the palette uh, so that when, when I'm uh, mixing colors, I can uh, compare it quickly on the palette and it's going to be the same as it is on here because they're duplicate references. They're printed exactly the same and the same size and everything. They are, they are identical. Uh, so we actually have to let this, uh, we have to let this dry a little bit and tack up a little bit. So uh, maybe this is a good point for our first break. Um, and then we'll come back and do the sketch. So uh, I'm going to let this dry up and tack up for a bit, actually. Uh, we're going to do a 20 minute break. I mean, nobody's here, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a 20 minute break and I'll be back. I will see you all at around 925 Eastern. See you then.
All right, guys, sorry about that. I just noticed the uh, music was turned down again. <laughs> so I don't have a dedicated streaming PC. This is just the PC that I use at my house. So <laughs> a 
when I have uh, sound settings changed, like the volume, it makes the volume a lot quieter for the music. And I don't realize it until the stream starts, even though all my settings are the same for broadcasting. If my PC volume is a little bit lower then well, then my music is a little bit lower unless I do a test recording. But who has time to do that, right? Unless this was my job, but it's not. This is not my job, obviously. You can probably tell from the subscriber count. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get the proportion sketch in here. Kind of see a reflection of me in that uh, glossy photo there. Hello. Um, we're only going to use burnt umber. That's it. Just burnt umber. Let me make sure this is in focus. There it is. There's a little deep up chat here. Oops. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, my bad. Let's fix that. Okay. Now I have chat up again. Let's get the sketch. Let's see here. So uh, I, my wife pointed this out yesterday and I'm noticing it now. Um, Super Bowl Sunday is today. <laughs> so I've had some people, it looks like there's been a few people that have come in and out of here, but uh, uh, not too many people want to stick around. Uh, throwing it out there right now during the view uh live viewership the average view duration is 49 seconds uh, we're going to change that by starting the painting now i mean i just toned it in i just started so we'll see it's me against the uh, youtube algorithm in the world let's get some burnt umber here i'm gonna put it on my palette and mix it with a bit of gamsol uh, more than a bit. It's going to be pretty washy while we do this uh, initial sketch. I'm going to take lots of measurements, lots of measurements to make sure everything is in the right place. These are actually the same size. Uh, this is cropped a little bit because the widest width, <laughs> the greatest width that I could select with uh, CVS is uh, eight inches. And this hardboard is nine by 12. So this is a nine by 12 hard hardboard. Uh, this is nine by 12 hardboard. This has linen canvas on it. This has an eight by 12 glossy photo that I printed from CVS, um, from this original high res image, which is available all over the place. Uh, classical paintings, not classical paintings, but anything that was made a long time ago is generally available for free. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't have copyright. You can. Just try to find a high resolution image of it that has a great value a representation uh so in this case it, you know you can see there's some really dark darks and very bright brights uh, that we we can work with so uh let me go ahead and get the sketch started here mix in i'm gonna dip this palette knife and gamsol and mix it with a bit of my burnt umber not showing the palette today because uh, we're not doing any color. At least that's the plan. We're just going to do the underpainting, which is just burn umber. And that's it. So I'm just going to do that. So I've got that mixed in. Um, in between strokes here, I might be dipping into the Gamsol to make the, the brush a little bit lighter, but it's a very small brush. Um, Actually, let me do that one more time. Just mix in with this bit here. You can't see what I'm doing, but I have a palette knife and I'm mixing yams all with burnt umber on my palette, which is the pink color. We're new to uh, oil painting. All right, so let's go ahead and get this basic sketch in. We're not gonna do the monochrome value painting yet or the the monochrome painting that represents values and form yet just proportions um in fact i might not take measurements no let's take measurements that's fine uh i think that would be wise 
<laughs> so we don't waste everybody's time. Um, you know, I could I could roughly estimate this and fix this as we go, but we are focusing on a lot of details on, you know, during this process. And instead of wasting a bunch of time on live, trying to, you know, push this edge here and push this edge there just a little bit to get all the proportions right, we're gonna take some measurements. Um, so I'm gonna start from the top here and we have, it's about that length. These are the same size, so I can do this type of measurement. I'm gonna estimate about where it goes in. I think it's about right there. Yeah, we're gonna mark that spot roughly. Then I'm gonna mark from the edge of this piece of cardboard. So not the edge of the painting because it's only, um, this painting is cropped down to uh, eight inches wide as opposed to nine inches. I'm gonna go to the edge of the cardboard and keep that measurement there. That's at the peak of that shape of the forehead. And it looks like I was off and this is why we take these measurements because I could guess uh, and then stuff will be off and then we'll just either have to work with it or fix it. Um, so this is actually the point that we're looking for. So let's just go ahead and verify that. We got this measurement here. There we go. And then uh, this measurement from the center, which is about that. And let me just double check. I think I lost it a little bit. There we go. It'll be in a little bit. Not too much though. Okay, so that's that That's that top point. We're just gonna focus on this shape right here. We have the, uh, the lips as well, we'll add that. Uh, but let me go ahead and go down to this point here, which is the very, we're gonna go, we follow this edge here all the way down until we get to right there. So we're gonna measure how far out from the edge that is that and then we're going to move over like this we're going to verify that that's at the correct position by taking the vertical measurement and see stuff can move so much i can't rely on my own point of view which is why we take measurements we're only using burnt umber right now i mean there's some gamsol on this so i'm just i'm not too worried about there's no cadmium or lead or anything like that. I don't own lead paints, but, um, all right. So we have those two, we have those two marked right there. So let's go ahead and just paint that in. So we have this angle that goes about like that, which is almost 45, but not quite. All right. So it's about, it's about like this. And we can correct stuff as we go. And it kind of comes out like that. And then we have this angle from the apex here. It's like this. Right? So it kind of takes that angle like that. Let's go ahead and try to match that. It's pretty dark. Um, probably lighten it up even a little bit more. It's okay for the edge right now, uh, but for the center stuff, we should be trying to do a little bit lighter strokes. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement for the bottom. So in order for me not to block this, let me go ahead and let's go for the bottom here. And it's about right there. Right, so we're gonna take this and move it over here. Align it with the bottom. We're gonna add a mark there, very small mark. And then uh, you just saw me drop a brush of milk. We're gonna take this, luckily it's not one that had any uh, pigment on it. We're gonna measure from the center here. So part of uh, the reason why I'm having measurements, especially with the horizontal is because the way that this is cropped, I, in my mind, I'm seeing it ending right here. 
which is usually how I see my references, but it actually ends in the center where this heartboard uh, ends and meets up with this other one. All right, so let's get the side measurement from the center, these two pieces of cardboard right there. And that's pretty close. It's just a little bit farther in. All right, so we have a landmark here we can go towards. Let's go ahead and try to light the, uh, also let me lighten up this stuff here a little bit. Anything that's darker on the earlier layers will probably show through on the, on the later layers, unless it's super opaque, uh, and your earlier layer is dry. Uh, but otherwise, um, I need to be conscious of doing, um, very, very opaque or very, um, dark lines during this under sketch part because it does show through even with opaque paints uh, especially with like ala prima and it's hard to, to get rid of uh, one example of that is if you were to look at my um recent painting it was like a month and a half ago i think two months of uh, the fruit bowl um you can see very clearly that uh, when you when at the end of the painting that there are these outlines underneath and you can kind of see it with this. Um, this is done purposely, of course, by this master painter. <laughs> but uh, but with my painting, there was some under drawing that was showing through and it was, um, it was a bit uh, it was a bit frustrating, but since I was doing Ala Prima, I just lived with it. And it was kind of a nice feature, kind of outline. It, you know, I, I feel like it kind of supported each fruit, but if you go back to that video and you look at the thumbnail or, or look at the fruits themselves, you can tell the disadvantage that you have of um, using a very dark uh, under sketch or, or sketch or under painting, I should say. Um, So I, I feel like that's really something to avoid. This measurement here, about right there. And from the edge as well. Here. Here, yeah, same measurement. Okay, so let me pick up a little bit more on the brush. And again, we're just worrying about proportions, not value or form or prettiness or anything else. We just want to make sure everything is in the right place. All of the features are placed correctly. We're going to take our time with the sketch. A little bit loose with it, not too much. Right, let's get the measurement for this eye. Okay, that's about right there. We might have to make uh, adjustments as we go. We're just get, getting the basic placement right for everything right now.
be using Q-tips to remove paint as I go for this initial sketch. All right, so um, some more measurements. Let's not guesstimate this. I'm going to, let me just double check and verify this pupil and then we're gonna block in the other one too. On this edge, we have this pupil here. It's right there. It seems about right. And then from this edge here, we have this one. And it is slightly higher than the other one. Not much though, but we'll take a measurement just to make sure. Actually, we probably can go about right there. Yeah, let's go ahead and mark that. That's the uh, pupil. So it looks a little funky right now, but uh, go ahead and take some other measurements here. And we'll start to get the other features blocked in. Okay, just like that. That is the edge of the wing, the left, no left nostril. And this is that pupil. The edge of this eye is about right there. measurement for this should get it from the inside here so there's a kind of some complex shadow shapes here that we're going to block in and I need to make sure I'm picking the right one we have the uh, inner shadow here on between the eye socket and the, the top of the nose here. So we have this, this first one. So I'm gonna take this measurement and I'm not, I'm gonna take it from the uh, edge of the hardboard itself. We'll go from this side actually. Go with the edge there, gonna kind of push my fingers towards the edge. So that's where I'm gonna take that measurement. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and I think it's about right. That's about the height we're going for. So let's go ahead and try to get that in there. Okay, so that seems about right. Okay, that is, we have a straight line here and it kind of goes out like that. Okay. Here, on this edge, we have this people. So right there. And we'll make sure it's parallel here. Mark this up. And this pupil, this comes out here, comes back on over. That's part of what's kind of confusing here. We have shape of the eye that comes out the end. Yeah, there we go. And there's a very dark shape right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep uh, sketching this in. We get the end of this nostril here, that measurement. It's there, that's the end, and then it's only about that long. So perfect there, but we'll adjust it if we need to.
uh, just blocking in some other details as I see them. some of this it's a bit excessive this shape kind of goes right here so we're starting to get some basic proportions that we can work around um, and soon we won't be taking very many measurements just kind of working off of our eye but uh, at this early stage it is important that we take some measurements I think uh, at least for my process, uh, so I don't have to, it's not distracting when I come to the second session or third session and proportions are off, you know? Let's double check that the end of the eye is right there. It is, that's fantastic. We have the, this shape right there. working very lightly if I can help it uh, I am blocking these pupils a little bit darker and this shape down here this kind of dimple that comes in right here and then there is a lighter plane right here uh, that's there's a local value we want to be conscious of this here eyebrow here Let me correct that later on all right I think at this point we can start blocking in some well, not at this point. I'm going to add a couple of details here. Darker uh, value points. Even though we're not super focused on value right now. Just to help us with the, the overall composition. And we have this. about right so right there that's the edge of the mouth there we are hello Dione welcome uh, let me get that shadow in here so the values are a little bit more correct we'll soften up this a bit soften up that a bit yeah it's a little bit extreme right here compared to everything else we're just working on the feature sketch. So we're not worrying about the values too much right now. Just the, uh, the layout of everything. So let's continue on with the uh, rest of the face here. We have the bottom of this mouth here. The mouth here. It's about right there. Bring that in. We have a dark value in that section. Go ahead and re-emphasize these darkest values for our own sketch. Uh, it looks a little wonky from farther away, but we uh, try to fix that so it's not so distracting.
All right, let's get uh, some of these uh, larger shapes blocked in too. So I'm gonna take this big brush here, dip it in Gamsol. Mix it with some burnt umber, semi-transparent uh, oil paint, which is the, again, the color I've chosen for this monochrome oil painting. And very washy. I have a lot of Gamsol mixed with this uh, paint. Go ahead and start blocking in some of these darker areas. Very roughly. Uh, this is the darkest value, so we're going to lighten it up a little bit too. Um, once we block this in, because we're we're very sketchy right now. We're just focusing on getting the painting blocked in mostly. All right, before I move on, let's uh, go ahead and correct some stuff. That, this pupil. here on that shape let's correct that some of that okay we're gonna get just like kind of a general like dark color blocked in for the rest of this and I'm gonna lift up a bunch of it with uh, paper towels All right, so stuff's gonna look super off right now and kind of janky. Uh, so I get this cleaned up. Go back to the soft edges between the hairs. All right, let me go ahead and get my gloves on. And we're gonna start doing some finger painting here. try to quickly block in as many values as we can, value shapes. All right, paper towels. And go ahead and get the rest of this blocked in here too. There's some we'll play. up and uh, just going to do a little bit over here too that we'll, we'll remove all right so again this stage crazy looks crazy right um we're gonna go ahead and just kind of start blending some shapes together and out and Get some very general value shapes blocked out for this painting. So it lightens up over here a little bit. Let's get the mustache here. It's looking a little bit um, Amish. All right, this side. 
this. Dark shadow there, and it goes out. The shape comes in like that. Okay. This is a very scary phase. We're gonna power through it here. Very wet, so we're gonna just kind of work with what we have and try to even out some value distribution and uh, kind of get some gradients going. Uh, like I mentioned, it's going to look very rough during this stage. It's going to just take a little bit to get things uh, kind of blocked out and worked out here. Uh, but if you look back at my previous videos where I'm doing monochrome oil sketches, it's it's just kind of that way. It's, this is how this is how the process goes. Um, very uh, wet. It's very um, it, it forces the exercise of observation and correction and patience so uh i'm hoping that we can all exercise that together if you're watching this now or watching that watching this later we're working through that exercise of patience as we get all of this blocked in and all of these values correct and all of this form correct Now, really, the only uh, true black places uh, in the entire painting are the mouth, the nostril, and the pupils, and a little bit of this core shadow where the beard and the um, the cheek meet, and some of the um, pores and some of the hair. There's some darker stuff too, um, but. The values are something we have to be very conscious of as we move on during this entire process. So like right here, yeah, it looks like super crazy. Main issue, value. Um, so like this, this eyebrow here, crazy, super dark. We start to lift that off and start to make it merge with this shape, which we need to make darker. We need to, we need to create a uh, value homogeny throughout all of this. Um, then it's going to start to make a lot more sense. As of right now, everything looks kind of crazy. I just fix stuff as we see it. I'm gonna use a dry brush here to kind of smooth out some hard edges and remove some material for the sketch. Work from the top down here. Okay, he looks kind of cross-eyed right now. We're gonna fix that. Using a dry brush to just kind of clear some stuff up here. Focusing on form, what I know, but what I see. this q-tip here clear out some of this eye okay 
soft brushes here and start to smooth out some of these gradients. Uh, we made this mix like super wet when we started too, uh, which is nice in some ways, but also um, makes it a little bit more difficult to kind of uh, flush out these details in the beginning because it's so runny. So, uh, like I said, a little bit of patience during this part of the process while we find the values and the shape and the form and everything. starting to come together a little bit. So we get the nose in here and we have some darker value shapes down there. Um, we go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Lighten up this upper eyelid right here a little bit. Pull it back a tiny bit and lighten that up. Also, this is like way more dark around this area. So let me go ahead and block that in. Got a lot of paint here on the brush. All right, we're starting to find the value, the shape and the form a little bit. It's starting to come together slightly, but we just need to give it a little bit more time and attention. Focusing on value. All, all the form that we see, I'm blurring my eyes at the reference and going back to the original. We have these side by side, so it fortunately makes all of this process a lot easier. Uh, let me make this brush stroke a little bit more congruent. All right, let's try to correct this area a bit. Taking a Q-tip here and lifting off the paint. Tip there to clear it up as well. We're gonna take this brush and kind of fill out that form that we just wiped off a little bit. We have this shadow down here that I need to block in a bit. All of this can be a bit darker too, at least on this side. This can be lighter up there. Okay, let's start uh, getting this blocked in a little bit more. It's just a little bit of push and pull as we do this entire sketch. Like I said, it's going to look a little crazy until we get everything locked in and looking right. Oops, let's get that dry again. Okay, so he's looking a little bit caveman-ish. Uh, not fear, do not fear, I should say. Let's go ahead and correct the form and uh, fix some of the edges. And that's gonna help with that a bit. And 
Let's uh, fix up this area a little bit. We need to darken up these eyebrows a bit here. Just trying to get an idea of the strokes that he's using. Uh, like I said, we're gonna study this a lot more um, later on as we do the color. And that's when we're gonna focus more on like the actual form and stuff like that. But uh, right now we just need to do this initial monochromatic sketch, which is like crazy and rough and it looks psycho like halfway, <laughs> halfway through the process. Uh, but you know, this is, this is gonna work. Uh, we have this smile that's going a little bit, not smile, but mouth uh, that's going a little bit downwards. So we'll fix that. This dark shadow here, that's an interesting shape. Again, just focusing on proportions right now because uh, when we come back to this in the second session and we start correcting other stuff, um, you know, we don't want to worry about where everything is on the canvas. We just want to worry about You just want to worry about, um, sorry, I'm getting all of these shadows mixed in here and it's, it's taking my full attention. We want to worry about, uh, you know, the color and the form. And as of right now, everything's looking super crazy. But if you've gone back and seen my other monochromatic uh, paintings, it's pretty normal. Pretty normal for this stage to look like this. Just kind of crazy while we get everything blocked in. But we're gonna fix it up. We're gonna make it work. I think the values are almost all kind of there and we have everything kind of roughly blocked in, but I need to uh, perfect all of these, not perfect, but fix up a lot of these shapes. I keep dropping stuff. I have major butter fingers tonight. That's like, Three in a row, that's crazy. Um, so right now it looks like his mouth's open and stuff. I'm gonna fix that. And I'm gonna lighten up that. Kinda lighten up that edge there. Soften up that. That just soften up any edges that we see that are distracting. So the eyes look like they're going in a different direction right now. We're going to correct that right now. Uh, part of it is placement of the rest of the features of the eye. So part of it is this white area, the white of the eye here. And that, that. correct this a little bit, correct the local value. And this is looking a little bit wonky, so let's go ahead and fix it. I think that this nose is a little bit too low. That bottom part. And his eye is looking like it's a little too close in. I think it's just because of the outer part of it here. All right, so we're starting to find it a little bit. Um, let's see what time are we at right now? An hour 50. Hello, Diego. 
Uh, great portrait. I need to check the record later, uh, because I am late. Yeah. Oh, thank you for showing up. <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate being here, Diego. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, we're working on getting this, uh, this sketch in. Um, yeah, fun. We're doing the, we're doing a, we're doing a master study tonight, which is super fun. And, uh, doing Peter Paul Rubens and, um, yeah, I think it's just going to be, this is going to be fun. We're starting it tonight. We're just doing the monochrome oil painting for now. Just make sure I have all the proportions in the right place and everything like that. And then, uh, we're going to get everything set up for doing full color mixing next stream. And, uh, locking in opaque colors and, and things like that. Um, so the, the lips are a little wonky too right now. Check that. All the shapes around here. We're getting there. Um, let me go ahead and check this text real quick. I've got a text. Uh, just one moment here. Uh, just kind of fix up some areas. This needs to come up higher like this. This needs to come up like that. There's a lot. There's like about a hundred different things we need to fix right now. Uh, we're kind of in the middle of a, we're in the middle of a very, um, like exploratory phase, getting all these values blocked in. So there's a lot of things that can be changed at this point. The nostril a little bit darker there. We need to make sure he's looking. And the way we do that is we got to change this. His pupils are a little bit farther up. That. And on this side too. A little bit farther up. And then the white of the eyes have to carry up a little bit like that. And he looks a little bit cross-eyed. So we're going to remove that there. And that's a little bit better. Now we're starting to look like we need to where we need to be. Uh, we have these uh, teeth here, of course. Uh, those are gonna be just opaque that we're gonna paint in later on. But I'm gonna rough up this edge here. And we're gonna add this shadow here. Oh, I just painted on that reference a little bit. Okay, let me get that big brush and get that darker value in up here on this corner. And here. I'm also going to blend this in a little bit. And it needs to be a bit darker up there. All right, we're getting there. We are getting there. Let's redefine this edge here and these eyes. This edge here, fix up a little bit. This interaction between these values here is pretty important. Uh, we're also gonna get the wing of the nose here, this crease. Let's 
heavier there at the bottom. Looks a little funky. I'm gonna fix that. The nostril right there. Also needs to be darker right there. this up a bit this shape here clean that up tone value around these eyes. Uh, we need transitional values. We have a dark shadow right there. And we've got to soften up these edges a bit. So I'm just going to use the brush. That shape there. A little bit darker underneath here to apply that form. Let's fix this up right there. And this edge right here. Uh, is this burnt umber? That's what uh, Diego just asked. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. It's burnt umber. Burnt umber and gamsol. Uh, let me go ahead and even out some of these values here. Line them up even. Take this brush here, come down there, hold it right there. And also is darker pretty much all around here. All right. And then we're going to soften up these edges here. And there. Cool. We're starting to get something that kind of works here. Just gonna use my finger and soften up some of these edges. All right, the eyes are obviously off a little bit still. Looks a little cross-eyed. Um, like I mentioned before, but we're gonna fix those a little bit more right now. These edges kind of come in a little bit more together. Like that. Let's take some measurements here. So from the edge here to the pupil, right there. And right there. Yep, that's correct. How about on this side? There. And there. Yeah, they're correct still. So I think we just need to do some value control. That's uh, pretty obvious from the edges that are around this area. Um, we also need to focus on the edges between shapes. Let me go ahead and kind of try to block that, carve this shape in again. Also, there's kind of a, a lighter edge that catches the light here.
like that. And um, I'm going to try to even out these values here. And then, of course, it lines up right there at that edge. And this hair comes through. Okay, so I think at this point, this might be a good stopping point uh, for a break, for another break. And then um, and then we'll come back. We'll come back to this and we'll, we'll finish the sketch. We'll refine the sketch a bit, this underpainting. And that'll get us all prepared to finish this up. And be ready for the second layer. So I'm gonna take a another break here in a moment. After I get these little things crisped up here. So these hard edges figure it out. And just a couple more little details so it doesn't look as funny. That, that edge of the mouth there. And pupils. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take a break here and uh, I'll be back in about um, in about 20 minutes. Thanks for joining. Catch you at the break. Saw your text. Sorry, I was um. No, I heard you. I heard you in verse in my oh. <laughs> chat.
Okay, I'm back. All right, so uh, I just I took a few notes. My you probably saw at the beginning of the break if you're watching. Um, my wife was in here. She was she was giving some uh, feedback to some very helpful feedback. One of the main things at the beginning of the sketch is I didn't measure the the top of the nose, so I just kind of estimated it and make stuff kind of look funky at first. Uh, so fix that um, as well as a couple other things. Um, I also took some notes um, here. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, let me go ahead and put this into focus here. Um, what I've done is I've, I've marked, I've taken a picture of the sketch and I have marked uh, different edges that I need to push and pull as well as any circles are values that I need to change. Uh, and then any lines with uh, arrows, arrows pointing are uh, value or edges that I need to uh, push that I need to move essentially. Um, and so it's all very subtle right now, but I think with these changes, we're going to get a lot closer to the original reference. So let me get this up in focus again. There we go. Double check that's uh, fully in focus. Get the uh, sketch in focus here. All right, that's about right. Okay, so I'm gonna keep up my phone here. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. Excuse me. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm gonna put my phone right here underneath and uh, I'm gonna use that just as a reference uh, for myself just to make sure I don't miss anything as I make these adjustments. I'm gonna try to explain the adjustments as, uh, as I go through. All right, so uh, first thing um, that's pretty obvious, not obvious, but uh, it's just easy to fix is um, this this tone is like more like a mid-tone. Actually, let me go ahead and mix all this up and then re-wet it just a tiny bit with uh, Gamsol. There we go. So we have this wet uh, burnt umber mix. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of block that in and then, um, and then even it out a bit to like a mid-tone with the uh, paper towel here. There we go. Um, and we can make it a little bit darker there, right here and here, and it's really dark here at this edge. It's drying up a bit. So the values are a little bit off for everything. It's just why we have to work kind of quick here. Um, but I'm going to kind of rewet these dark spots here. Uh, another thing is this, uh, this thing. So I'm just going to fix that there. That edge needs to come in a little bit. We'll soften it up. With the big brush here. And like this. And this is a little bit distracting right there. So let's uh, smooth that out. A little bit of a shadow right there we'll kind of half block in smooth that out there uh, that can be corrected too should be corrected that edge needs to come in a little bit there all right so working from the top here um we have this area here that needs to be cleaned up right there and this edge, I'm going to pick up a bunch of this paint and let's uh, readdress this edge right here. Kind of comes in like that and not that far, but a little bit closer. I'm going to soften up the edge with just a Q tip here next to the hair. And 
and you know we're working with uh, wet and stuff that's starting to kind of dry now because we use so much uh, gamsol so values are like kind of all over the place so we're gonna have to reestablish stuff as we go again just to make sure we're doing things right but that's okay because this is all going to be dry by the next session even if the next session is tomorrow because we're using so much solvent at this phase all right Let me use a q-tip here and lighten up that section right there and now i'm able to work with uh, local values a little bit uh, i'm going to correct this whole shape here a little bit more um, so what we do for that is we got to lift up this eyelid just a touch just a hair like that and the bottom of there we go we got to just make it look like he's looking upward a little bit same with this here we're going to even out that edge a little bit so he's looking up on both sides and it's still looking a, little, a bit off and that's mostly because of values that are missing um, so like right here, these eye, this eyelash, upper eyelash kind of joins into one shape. Um, and then there are some values here that kind of creep in that imply a lot of shape. So if we make that change right there, he no longer looks cross-eyed. We can still make more corrections though. Clean that up, push this in a little bit like this. And uh, of course, this uh, actually all of this kind of comes in a lot more. That's another note. I'll bring that in a little bit like that. Not that much on the edge, so we'll pick up a little bit with a Q-tip. So it's just a lot of push and pull, push and pull right now at the edges. I'm trying to use the biggest brush possible. And right now, um, I I'll, I'll reemphasize this. We're not. For the sketch part, I'm not like going nitty gritty into, you know, um, what was the artist thinking in this moment? I'm just trying to make sure everything is in the right place so that when we start laying down full color uh, and start matching values and stuff, it's all gonna make sense um, because if we don't figure that out right now, it's gonna be very frustrating um, to try to, especially on stream, <laughs> try to get everything in the right place. So right now I'm just focusing, I'm just following my method that I followed for a long time to, um, to do these monochrome oil sketches, which is just very iterative. It's just like, it's just like, okay, start big shapes. Okay. looks terrible. Fix, 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 fix. Okay. There we go. Now it looks kind of right. And that's like, that's like, that's my process. And right now we're, we're also, you know, of course taking measurements too and other stuff to make sure we're in the right, right place for everything. But we have this shape here that we need to adjust. Uh, another edge here. Okay. We fixed that. We fixed the eyelids, I think for the most part. Um, it's not totally there though, because, um, still looks like it's kind of looking forward as opposed to upwards. And let's try to, let's try to analyze this so we can really figure this out. I think there's just some small adjustments that we can make to the eyes to really make it seem like he is looking upwards. Uh, also all of this can kind of like merge together, kind of get rid of that smile shape there. I think a lot of it is implied from these kind of muscle and uh, not uh, kind of these, the skin tension. There's so much complexity to these, uh, to this value and form here that we're going to address in the next phase too, uh, in this eye socket. If you zoom in on this picture, it is crazy. Um, and I'm going to try to show more detail too. Oh, I think that's part of what it was too, is this shadow for this eye. Let's try to correct that. Line it up just a tiny bit. Yeah, that's okay. This shadow right here actually made a huge difference once we fixed that. So let's bring that in a little bit more. And up like that. And we'll lighten it up. 
Oh yeah, that was huge. That's crazy, actually. We're discovering things together. I'm gonna lighten it up by just kind of tapping the Q-tip here on this eyelash. And uh, let's clean up this eye. I think by doing that, that helps too. Perfect. It definitely helps. It's not perfect yet, but I said perfect, <laughs> but it's far from perfect yet. Also, there's some highlights too that are going to help. So we have like this highlight that kind of cuts, cuts through the eye diagonally, which is beautiful, by the way. Oh my God. I love this painting. I love this painting so much. <laughs> it's so, it's so nice. I'm so glad that I get to stare at this for a few hours and really get to, to know it well. Uh, I think part of it too is this, this lower eyelid shouldn't be able to go so low. That's another thing. So now that I kind of lighten that up a, a bit, let's darken it again. Yeah, that's actually part of what it was as well. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so there's uh, some very small adjustments that we can make that make a huge difference as we're uh, finding the form here and getting all of that fleshed out for this phase. This kind of comes down a little bit lower. Get this highlight on this side too. We'll kind of temper that a little bit. All right, cool. It's starting to come together a little bit for this uh, for this initial sketch, which is ideal. It's going to make it a lot easier for us on the next phase when we start um, mixing uh, full color. Uh, man, I mentioned this before, but this is going to be really nice for the setup, and it's not something something I normally do. But having having the the reference side by side in the exact same lighting with the glossy photo reference is like. This is like a step up, man. Having the monitor is nice. It would be even nicer if I had an OLED monitor so we had the actual value range to work with. But um, having a glossy photo reference is like, it's great. <laughs> it's like, it's so good. Uh, I'm just getting some of these uh, edge details here a little bit. Um, just explaining what I'm doing <laughs> as I'm ranting about this other thing. Anyway. All right, so this is starting to come together pretty good. Uh, I think we might call it here soon in a minute, just to uh, just as far as the sketch goes, we don't want to overwork anything. We want to just want to make sure everything's kind of in the right place, and we can probably remove some values here with the paper towel. That might be the right next move, so that we can get some more value blocking here and kind of even out this stuff. A lot of this is uh, wet on dry because the gamsol is starting to dry a bit. So the values are kind of get compressed uh, when we're painting in the next layer. So when you look at this tomorrow, all these darks are going to be a little bit lighter. Um, and since we're going to be mixing like full gradients and stuff, I'm not and like matching with this. I'm not going to worry about um, like wetting or like oiling the uh, the canvas, like oiling out tomorrow. Um, or the next stream. I'm just going to work over this, this, uh, new, um, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to work over this underpainting. I'm thinking of a hundred things right now. Uh, let's see here. So let's go ahead and flesh out that nose a little bit more again. So, um, the artist does a very interesting thing here, which is, it's not interesting. This is done a lot actually in, in drawing. And, and in painting, but not as much in modern painting uh, because you want to avoid using lines or at least when you're trying to, not modern, I mean contemporary. My terms are all over the place. Um, this line, the point I'm getting to is this, this line right here, there's a line that we're going to be conscious of. It's like that uh, while we, and I, I painted it in a little bit too, 
close um, that actually kind of define like uh, you can't see it too well in this reference but if you were to zoom in on this painting uh, you can find it online um, study of two heads um, if you zoom in you'll be able to tell that it, it's interesting there's like an if you look at this in real life there's not an actual line um, separating the nose from the eye and this cheek over here but a, a, a drawing a trick and not a trick but it's just something that you, it's a tool that you can use while you're drawing is is implying those lines and adding those lines um, especially when you're drawing like it's just interesting to see in a painting. I know it's done a lot in paintings uh, and stuff, but it's just interesting having this type of subject have. I could be new. Maybe maybe people that have studied uh, Baroque uh, period and Flemish painting and stuff like that can tell me, oh yeah, that was just done all the time. That'd be great. If you can tell me in the comments, like if that was pretty common, that's awesome. But I've been more used to studying like uh, contemporary, like more not contemporary but more recent uh, portrait paintings like john singer sergeant and other stuff and that's not something i have noticed as much is like cheating in that that uh distinguishing line but i don't know what do i know okay so we can lighten up this a bit there we're gonna do some edge control there soften that up um this can kind of come in like that. Yeah, so like this whole eye is actually that I can I can I can see what's going on with this now. This needs to be there's there should be no here. Let me remove this value right here. Just this like smudge right there. And now it looks like he's looking in a different direction. Just that little smudge right there made a huge difference. Uh, plus, I'll lighten up all this stuff. Yeah, this right here and that right there. Okay. So small adjustments can go a long way. Yeah, some edge control we need to do right here. Uh, since I'm just working with burnt number two, I'm not wearing gloves or anything. I'm not too worried about getting the paint on my hands, even with a little bit of Gamsol. This shape kind of come up a little bit like that. We're gonna soften it up. Big fat soft brush. Like this, we really wanna soften up all these edges here. Uh, right now, everything's pretty sharp. I'm gonna pick up some of the paint, wipe it off on a paper towel. I'm gonna re-block that value here. It's like this, kind of steps in like that and blend out to that point again. And uh, there's this, there's kind of a separation of these beard portions here, the, the natural beard uh, patterns. I have a beard myself and uh, I painted a lot of beards. So I can always kind of tell when something's off, but the thing is about beards, is they tend to be as long as you're you're following some sort of reference everything that happens once the beard goes out is is okay but the way it interacts with the face makes a big difference and you'll see it in the in some of my other paintings i try to really focus on the shapes of of the beards like major value shapes and how it contributes to the form um on top of being realistic uh because it's it's very realistic to have these kind of bald spots like how this reference has here the subject that was in front of this uh, in front of this painter very natural to have that type of hairline paint that part back in there okay so just making some small adjustments here I'm gonna put my phone back on again and then make sure I didn't miss any of the notes that I took on break also soften up some of these edges this is all like i said it's uh this is not going to be nearly as dark uh tomorrow 
um, all this stuff that we're painting in. It's going to be very uh, light because it's a thin layer. It's been uh, kind of, uh, not kind of, it's been very uh, washed down with uh, all of those mineral spirits. All right, uh, we also have this shadow here that we need to get in below the lower lip. And then there's an important shape that I don't want to miss while I'm painting, and I made a note of this. There we go. We're going to light up some of that. There's some light that catches right there. Uh, there's some just a lot of notes that I've taken uh, about the study overall so far. Like I mentioned, I did that last night. And as we in the next phase, I'm going to go through uh, a lot of those notes and kind of um, really uh, flesh it out every detail. Sorry, I'm kind of just looking at this uh, multitasking here because we're getting close to the end of this phase. can push some of the values we should I'm gonna remove some of that with the paper towel to kind of lighten up that same with this cheekbone where the uh, the light catches on this plane here lighten that up with the paper towel um, also can darken up this area here. So I'm going to pick up some of that paint there, dry it off a bit and just kind of blend that in. Also soften up some of these edges too. And darken just before we end here and I take some pictures. I'm going to darken the darkest points again, just to make sure it's all um, congruent. I don't even think that's the right word, to be honest. Pupil. So the darkest parts. You'll see this with the master paintings too. Uh, if you were to, you can, I mean, if you're look at this up close, you can tell that the only parts that are close to black or black are the pupils and the corners of the mouth here where it looks into the where no light can get to uh, this edge right here there's just like very subtle speckles of black um, this crevice right here where barely any light can get into so those areas we want to make sure that we have um, nice and dark throughout the painting process There's a little bit of shadow that reaches out right there. Smooth that out. Uh, we can bring in this edge. Yeah, this whole, the nose, this can be a lot closer. This the edge of this cheek can come in quite a bit. That actually, so this nose, let me take a measurement here. So. The end of this nose right here. Yeah, actually can come out quite a bit. So we're going to correct that right now. It's not too late. Everything's still very wet. So we're going to go ahead and correct that. Take this brush and we'll just kind of brush out where this needs to go. Much closer to this edge here. Let's double check that measurement. and that's right okay so now we're going to take that new measurement and that's going to be our new nose and every, i think everything is going to kind of fall into place a little bit better now okay there we go like i said not too late to make a correction there um with that correction we need to adjust a couple of other things i think maybe let's see we can lighten up that value this uh, kind of cheated in line here. I'll 
so this can be a lot darker right there. And this pupil can be darker right there. Okay, uh, let's not overwork this. I think that's a pretty good sketch. We can make corrections as we paint tomorrow as well. So I'm just gonna soften up a couple more edges and then we're gonna wrap up here. It's nice working without gloves every once in a while. <laughs> I'm gonna lighten up that, uh, that value is okay let's get the q-tip out we almost ruined that section right there we didn't ruin it we can fix it <laughs> but uh you know so this shadow is actually about right there now and this shadow comes out right there So last minute corrections here. And uh, like I mentioned, we're gonna come back uh, next stream and go over this with full color. And we're gonna do color matching and everything. And there's lots of really neat things that I've noticed about this painting that want to make sure details that we want to make sure that we get in there so that we can learn. Okay, just using the Q-tip to pick up some values, soften some edges. These compressed Q-tips are like amazing, man. I love them. Probably bring in the edge even a little bit more, even after bringing out the nose. So let me correct this area a bit. Just doing some very soft uh, blending with my brush just to soften up edges. You know, previously I've been saying that the blending part I've been kind of confusing the, the two um, terms uh, where I say I do edge control. Really edge control is more, it's not what I'm doing right now, which is like blending and stuff like that. Edge control, I think from what I understand more applies to the control that you have of edges between, um, between objects or like light interactions, like between a shadow or if it's a, a bevel edge over planes that type of edge control refers to, you know, your ed your control of edges between value planes, as opposed to what I've been saying, which, you know, sometimes it applies when I'm like blending stuff, but you know, it's just something to keep in mind. If you've watched any of my previous streams, I may not be using the correct terminology, but I think I've done that pretty often, to be honest. I don't mind. I'm not embarrassed to say that. I'm learning still. I'm always going to be learning. Darken that up. Um, this could kind of be darkened up a little bit around the edge of this eye. And then on this edge here, just lightened up. And this kind of pulls up there. So we'll lighten it up. Kind of an interesting shape here um it's like if you think about like drawing a face especially in like a like this type of form it's like you don't expect an eyeball especially this like eyeball to be that type of shape it is kind of crazy uh, let me go ahead and lighten up this right here around the eye Same like that and that that can be lightened up a little bit too. And we've worked it a little bit 
much, so we're going to correct it here. There we go. And this should be all darkened up right here. It's starting to look a little cross-eyed again, so we'll correct that. This kind of not totally shadow but close to shadow shape above here that's a bit triangular and actually nailing that shape makes a big difference in the emotion of this painting so if I add that a little bit there and it kind of contributes to that shape it's uh, a lot more emotion going on right there okay so uh, let's go ahead and and take a step back here and see if we want to make any last minute changes. Take this fan brush and kind of apply some of that hair shape. Also abstract this a little bit. Look a little smoother. All right, soften up some of these edges. And darken up that. So stuff's starting to dry, and as stuff dries, it's, it actually kind of affects everything because we're using so much Gamsol. <laughs> so all these values are kind of starting to shift a little bit, and that's uh, one disadvantage to this uh, process. Not saying that I'm just uh, blaming my current issues on that, but, you know, it doesn't help. Let's lighten up that a bit. Let's that out. Sound like that. Let's lighten up all of this. Lighten up that. Okay. Uh, darken up that right there. Soften it up. Actually, let's use a synthetic brush here. Get some more action going here, a little bit more pigment. There we go. Now we can darken that up. Get another soft brush here and make some more corrections as needed. Remove anything that's distracting. Take a step back. Have this here. There's some really cool shapes that we'll want to focus on when we do the full color as well. Um, just kind of the flow of the overall painting right now we're not as focused on that i'm trying to i'm trying to get some of those details but uh, the main focus right now is proportions and making sure everything is kind of in its right place gave him a bit of a makeover there. I didn't realize that brush was so wet. And that was uh, completely my doing and negligence. But we can kind of use this to our advantage and get this blocked out here. Lighten 
Not for that. Go. Maybe not that much. Like that. Run this together to make it less distracting. This is a very dark shape right here. Uh, it implies there's a nice value plane I can shape right here. Kind of goes up like that, fills out like that under the lip. Right now he's and he's still looking a little gooberish from uh, your perspective. Let me look here. Let me figure out what's going on. So here's like let's get this. It goes in a little bit like that and in like that. Fix that edge a little bit more. Um, I think there's a shadow shape I can kind of block in a bit more like this. I'm standing up now. So let me move up the microphone here and it'll be closer to me. Like that. There we go. It's not perfect. You may not be able to hear me completely, but um, yeah, I just need to stand up and kind of back up for this last part of the process. Uh, the sketching process, that is. So let's uh, apply some of this detail again, like that. Okay, doesn't need to be perfect. We're painting over most of this. I think the proportions are pretty much there. And so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up now and I'm gonna take a photo before it starts to dry up anymore. Um, and uh and then uh i'm gonna schedule the next stream let's do let's just do the next stream tomorrow so we'll plan it tomorrow i'm gonna schedule the next stream and we're gonna we're gonna move on with this painting and uh yeah do like full um full color so actually let me get this right here there's a little bit some more darker shapes right here that we need to block in kind of like that Soften it up. Soften it up. Like that. Soften up these edges here. Should be darker, like right here. There we go. Let's make sure we get this line established. This kind of comes up a little bit more like that. This is darker right here too. And on the top, this. Pick up a lot of paint. Like that. Soften that up. Soften this up to lighten up all of this. The paper towel. We'll pick up some material. And then uh, soften it up a little bit more. This whole area right there. Soften up, soften up, blend, 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 blend. Okay. 
blend in some of these areas. Just need them to make sense, you know, a little bit more. Soften up that a bit. All this. in that value back in. I said I was going to end just a minute ago. No, I haven't. Uh, just got to punch in a couple of values here. Sorry about that. soften up some stuff too. Actually, I'm not going to end quite yet. There's there's some other stuff I want to correct. There's actually a few things I'm seeing here. This nose. Just a little bit. Same with that side. And eyes. Let's get that established again that the shape here that shadow there just some very subtle changes i think we can make that will help us in the next phase I'll light this up a little bit that a little bit as well as this edge here it's a little high contrast and it's a little bit um, bright right there and it can be a little bit darker right here I think we pushed in the edge a little bit on the nose again. We can correct that. paint here just making this a little bit more difficult and we'll get this edge again close it kind of like that and then out like that there we go that is better not perfect we can correct it tomorrow if we need to i think that's more of what we're looking for pick this up the q-tip here on the edge punch the values one more time and then I'm going to wrap up the stream. Promise this time. Soften that up a bit. Get 
this uh, apex here, apex highlight. For that, I'm gonna have to darken this up a bit. Yeah, by blocking it in and then blending it out. Like that. I'm gonna soften up these edges here those ones there We're losing the nostril a little bit here let me go ahead and do some measurements so we make sure that we're in the right place all of this all right so the edge of the nostril this one is right there and for this guy yeah we have that right and then the inside we just want to make sure we're not getting feature drift you know the inside is right there okay so that's that's our main problem I'm not extending it out right there like I should and then this all needs to be softened up here. And this can be darkened up right there. Same with this. There's a nice little triangle shape right here. You don't want to ignore. Okay. And then lighten up the top of that nostril a little bit right there. And punch in that wing a little bit, that fold. Like that. Get that back in a little bit right there. Okay. I think we are uh, pretty much there. Just kind of pushing this edge a little bit more. There we go. Gonna raise up that eyebrow a bit. There we go. All right, so it's starting to come together here at the end. And uh, I think I have punched out the values that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and call it I think for tonight and then we're gonna do the full color next time I think I said that exact same thing about 10 minutes ago <laughs> and then I found some other stuff to correct um, man I just keep seeing stuff I think that would be good to fix you know I think a lot of it's due to drying 
yeah, we can't keep going because it's, it's we're fighting against uh, drying paint because there's so much Gamsol. So let me go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Thank you guys. I'm going to schedule a stream for tomorrow. We'll catch you at the same time, 830 Eastern. Uh, if you haven't liked the video and you enjoy the content, please like the video. Uh, I'm going to stream again and uh, subscribe so you don't miss it. Cool. We're going to finish this painting. Not tomorrow, but uh, we'll, we'll continue it. We'll probably be a three session. So catch you then. Have a good night.